Good morning. Uh, I'm Father John Barker. I'm the vicar of All Saints Harrow Weald. We're within the Church of England and part of the Diocese of London. Uh, I'm newly back from a few days break in a much warmer country than here. And anyway, we're home, we're well, we're safe. And this morning, we're going to resume our tradition of live stream worship uh, at around 10.30. We will have a service of morning prayer. I invite you to join us this morning. It is uh, from common worship, so it is in contemporary language. And today, it's a feast of Saint Swithin, and we will keep the feast as we worship God this morning. And as we prepare for worship, we'll play some music, and it will be, uh, again, we are following the beautiful music provided by uh, the Choir of Musicians of St. Martin's in the Field. Today it is their interpretation of Psalm 23, The Lord's My Shepherd. beautiful words of the 23rd Psalm, uh, the tune composed by Townsend. Beautiful, beautiful words as we prepare to worship God, remembering that it is God who guides us, who cares for us in the good times and in the bad times. And so let us worship that God on this day, the Feast of St. Swithin. I greet you all in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The Venite. O come, 
let us sing to the Lord, let us heartily rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving and be glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have moulded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. Let's keep silence for a moment and at the beginning of this new day, let's commit all that will be this day to God's guidance and blessing. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our morning psalm, Psalm 110, with the refrain, the Lord is King and has put on glorious apparel. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. May the Lord stretch forth the scepter of your power. Rule from Zion in the midst of your enemies. Noble are you on this day of your birth. On the holy mountain, from the womb of the dawn, the dew of your new birth is upon you. The Lord is King and has put on glorious apparel. The Lord has sworn and will not retract. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The King at your right hand, O Lord, shall smite down kings in the day of his wrath. The Lord is King and has put on glorious apparel. In all his majesty he shall judge among the nations, smiting heads over all the wide earth. He shall drink from the brook beside the way, therefore shall he lift high his head. The Lord is King and has put on glorious apparel. Lord Jesus, Divine Son and Eternal Priest, inspire us with the confidence of your final conquest of evil and grant that daily on our way we may drink of the brook of your eternal life and so find courage against all adversities for your mercy's sake. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our Old Testament canticle from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Spirit of God, teach us your ways that we may walk in the paths of peace. Come, let us go up to the mountain of God, to the house of the God of Jacob, that God may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For the law shall go out from Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. God shall judge between the nations, and shall mediate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. 
Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O people of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. Spirit of God, teach us your ways, that we may walk in the paths of peace. Our New Testament reading is from the Gospel of Luke, the early verses of the 20th chapter. One day as he was teaching the people in the temple and telling the good news, the chief priests and the scribes came with the elders and said to him, Tell us, by what authority are you doing these things? Who is it who gave you this authority? He answered them, I will also ask you a question, and you tell me. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? They discussed it with one another, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say, Why did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, all the people will stone us, for they are convinced that John was a prophet. So they answered that they did not know where it came from. Then Jesus said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The chief priests, and scribes and the elders came with a question, by what authority are you doing these things? They look for every possible way to get things wrong. If only they'd stopped, they would have seen with wonder that everything that had been written in the Torah, everything that was foretold, was there right in front of their eyes. This is an example of the old adage, is there are none so blind as those who will not see. By what authority are you doing these things? Well, it's one thing to ask a question like that of Jesus. We believe it's absolutely clear. Everything that Jesus did was of God because he is, was, is and forever will be of God. Father, Son and Holy Spirit. But what about if that sort of question is asked of us? You know, Jesus turned it to the baptism of John. Yeah, he was a, a, a mortal person, a normal person, but he was pretty special compared to us living in the 21st century. What about us? Well, let's take the example of St. Swithin, whose feast day it is today. If you've heard of St. Swithin, I wonder why. If you're a country person, it would almost certainly be because of our old tradition that if it rains on St. Swithin's day, it'll rain for 40 days and 40 nights thereafter. So, superstitions, traditions, sayings, that's what I would have normally remembered about St. Swithin, but what about Swithin the man? Why did he become a saint? Well, the reality is, like many of the early saints, we don't know a great deal. We know that he was uh, one of the early bishops of Winchester, that he was a very fine scholar, and the origins of Winchester School very much linked to the teachings in the cathedral, which as its bishop, Bishop Swithin of Winchester was very much involved in educating young, young men, including one of the sons of the current king. So he was a very good teacher. He was pretty liturgical. He kept to a liturgy. He lived and he died. And then some years after, he was, oh, he was buried outside of the cathedral. 
in a churchyard. And some years, some like 90 years after his death, it was decided to move his, uh, his coffin, his mortal remains, into the cathedral, as often happens with the bishops of the particular see. And on the day that they moved it, no, he didn't step out of the coffin, nothing like that. It rained and rained and rained. And this was the beginning because after he was moved, it miraculously stopped. And there we have the beginnings of the tradition, 40 days and 40 nights. If it doesn't rain on St. Swithin's, it won't rain for 40 days. If it does, then we'll have bad weather for 40 days. So nothing to do with what he did in his life. It's what happened on a day many years later when his mortal remains were moved. So what does that tell us about whose authority? Well, it certainly wasn't on Swithin's authority. Yeah. Who gives us rain? God. Who gives us fine weather? God. By whose authority? God's. For God is the authority. And God is willing to be our authority if we will him to be. So on this day we have the example of Swithin. He did what he could and he's remembered for a very funny reason but he's remembered and it's a good reason. So by whose authority are you living? I pray that your answer may be by God's authority. Amen. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Our New Testament canticle, the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And now, let us say our morning prayers. Let us pray. Dear loving Heavenly Father, as we worship you this morning, we pray that all that we do may be guided by you and that we may live by your authority. We pray that when people see us, they may see your light shining within us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as we begin this new day, we pray for our church, the Church of England. 
We pray for the three bishops who will be consecrated today, beginning their new responsibilities. We ask you your blessing upon them and upon us all. We pray that we may understand now ever more than ever that we are your church. We, your people, not just the buildings in which we were so, acc so accustomed to worship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we pray for those who continue to be affected by coronavirus. We pray that our leaders may make good and wise decisions that will help us all. We pray for those who are currently suffering from the virus and for the doctors and nurses and carers who are doing everything in their power to help and care for those who need and cannot help themselves. And we pray for the researchers looking continuously for vaccines and antidotes better testing systems. Lord, give them inspiration and give strength to those who are tired. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we turn to our personal prayers and we remember those who we know and love who particularly need your comforting presence at this time. From our parish list, we continue to pray for Jane Slade, for Angela Kidd, for Claire Rording, for Emma Foss, for Margaret Vinter, for Janice Glasser, for Laura Baker, and for Doug Garrett. Lord, may your tender and healing spirit be with them all. Comfort them and give them strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, in these prayers, we remember those who are no longer with us, but through their lives have given us an example to follow of living by your authority. I commend to your mercy the immortal soul of my uncle, Lawrence Barker, whose funeral will be tomorrow. May he rest in peace and rise in glory. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Our collect for this feast day. Almighty God, by whose grace we celebrate again the feast of your servant Swithin, grant that as he governed with gentleness the people committed to his care, so we, rejoicing in our Christian inheritance, may always seek to build up your church in unity and love. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen.
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and with all those who you love today and always. Amen. Thank you for joining us again this morning. Whatever you're going to be doing today and wherever you are, I pray that your day will be happy, will be blessed in the sight of God and will be safe. And I pray that everything that you will do today and every day will be by the authority of God. So, have a good day. I'm going to leave you now with some more music to conclude our worship. Uh, there will be no live stream worship tomorrow. I will be attending my uncle's funeral. Uh, we'll be back on Friday and it will be evening worship on Friday. But now, let's conclude with again from the uh, choir and musicians of uh, St. Martin's in the field. It's a beautiful prayer. God be in my head and in my understanding. God be in my head.